Good day, Dave. Here we are on a rainy afternoon in western North Carolina. First of all, thanks for agreeing to do this video interview with me. Sure. For our audience, could you please introduce yourself and tell us where you live and work and what you do? Sure. So, Dave Barton. I live and work in northwestern North Carolina. We're here in Wilkes County, North Carolina right here, uh, looking over the reservoir. And I am an instructional designer. I work in the federal sector. I'm almost 10 years into this discipline. Uh, and I've gotten to work with uh, a couple of different offices and have some experience doing instructional design, teaching instructional design, uh, and then getting more into uh, internal performance consulting. Great, thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about where you grew up and uh, where you went to school, what you studied, etc.? Sure. So I grew up in Virginia Beach, Virginia, which is a, a fabulous place to grow up. And I went to college at the College of William and Mary, Williamsburg, Virginia. I studied history and psychology. Um, and I, I went on to do some things, uh, various things. One of them was uh, an alternative uh, outdoor education program. So I did a, kind of an ed, ed program for a couple of years and then decided to get a Master's of Business Administration. And it was during that program that I kind of encountered the, you know, the field of human resource development, organizational behavior, and kind of got interested into the idea of corporate training. Can you talk a little bit more about some of the uh, other interesting things that you've done in your career thus far? Yeah, well, I, I was uh, fortunate to uh, enter the federal government as part of a program that was developmental in nature. and. I, went and got another master's degree in instructional technology. So I, I feel like I got a very solid background. Uh, this was with East Carolina uh, University. And I was able to do this with a DOD agency uh, at the time where I could apply um, a lot of the theories uh, that we were talking about in class. So I feel like I got a really solid framework from that experience. Uh, and that led to some opportunities to uh, work on some really cool projects. Um, and what I really enjoyed was teaching and teaching others about design processes uh, and translating those you know, theories into practical things that we could use, particularly as these organizations were experiencing change uh, in, in, in the shift from you know, more of a traditional model of providing training to a more of a learner-centered model uh, and one that took advantage of technology. Excellent. Uh, can you share with us a little bit about your first exposure to HPT, Human Performance Technology, or however you refer to it? Sure. So my first exposure to HPT uh, was actually in graduate school, and I have a, a big, thick textbook. I think it's the thickest one. Uh, it's the Handbook of Human Performance Technology. Um, I think it was edited by uh, Pershing. Uh, and a lot of other great contributors. And I didn't understand what the class was about or what the textbook was about. I really struggled on that word technology. Um, but once I got a little further into it, I, I kind of understood. Um, and it, it, it all fit. It made a lot of sense to me. Uh, and still those just very simple principles, I think, apply to so many of the things um, that we do. Can you talk to us a little bit about some of your uh, other influences besides that uh, handbooks of people or articles or other books sure. that were influential? Yeah, I had a lot of um, a lot of influences for sure. And in coming up in learning instructional design, I remember looking at the uh, Dick and Carey model, Mager and Pipe. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of the basic design stuff. I got, and I'm not sure how I got exposed to this, um, but I. I he started looking at Gilbert, Thomas Gilbert's uh, behavior engineering model uh, and incompetence versus competence. And I really, I, I don't know much else, I didn't read uh, that, that book by him, but I, I was exposed to those things and I, I really just latched onto them and some of the variations of um, the behavior engineering model where, where you have, you know, quadrants and there's different influences um, that can be used to get to the root of a, a, of a problem and brainstorm some interventions. And even just an elementary understanding of that really helped me think more holistically in my practice, um, and I appreciated that. Um, I encountered a lot of cool people and um, got turned on to you know, some research and textbooks through a variety of conferences, um, went to several ISPI conferences, uh, national or international, um, uh, ATD or formerly ASTD, eLearning Guild, and uh, some of the big, uh, uh, you know, some some of the people that influenced me in my thinking um, uh, at that at that time, kind of early early in the journey, I, I like Will Tallheimer's stuff uh, on evidence-based, you know, research and on you know making sure that we're 
you know, not applying, uh, learning, learning myths and, and, you know, heading off in the wrong direction. And, and also his more recent stuff on, on learning evaluation. Um, I'm really into analysis and, and I liked uh, Dr. Allison Rossett's um, contributions to that and, and thinking about simple ways to look at analysis as well as uh, job aids and performance support. And at some of these events, I heard, you know, other big names of people that, you know, Gary Rumler and Joe Harless, and, and I was exposed to them in a Coast Guard HPT conference, which was really cool. So I, I kind of felt that there was this other world, world out there. Um, and that, that wasn't my experience. So, so I, I guess I've come onto this a little bit from the side and with an appreciation for those things. But I'd still say there's a lot left to learn. Um, from you know many of these people that, that came before, and I'm fortunate to get to work with a lot of people in this community um, on lots of different projects. Very good, thank you. Um, if you were to give us a 30-second elevator speech on what you currently do, uh, you're at a neighborhood party, so there's a new neighbor moves in, they ask, uh, Dave, what do you do for a living? What do you tell them? Yeah, so I'm very popular at these kinds of parties, as you can imagine. <laughs> um, and I see myself as a learning designer. I work uh, for the National Park Service. Uh, and so I'm really excited that I get to support, you know, the very smart, talented, and committed um, employees of the Park Service in doing lots of great things. And so it's a mission I can really um, get behind of stewardship, uh, shared service, and preserving these wonderful natural and cultural resources. Um, and. And I get in this job to work with a lot of training and program managers. So I, I work more at a strategic level and more at a cons, uh, consultative uh, level than I do. Um, and I like that because I get to do a, a variety of, of work on many different projects. Thank you. Can you, as a lifelong learner, can you share with us uh, what you're currently focused on or what your next focus is for learning? And uh, are you? Uh, are you writing anything uh, now or soon that you can share with us? Sure. Thanks for that question. I, I um, have struggled in s several of the organizations I've worked with in terms of selling the idea of performance improvement. Just the lexicon is not familiar to people. Uh, the terminology, we don't have positions that are called those things. And so I, I think the, thing, the, the, the things that I've been exploring are how to be effective uh, within the systems and within the language, um, you know, of, of the customers that, that we're working with. Uh, and so I've really learned a lot from um, uh, other consultants I've worked with. One of my internal mentors, George Lisich, uh, who's an OD practitioner, I've learned a lot from him and, and you see a lot of similarities in the approach and really have an appreciation for that field. And so I'm really interested in learning more about organization development. Um, to that extent, I've also looked at change management. I uh, have gotten a lot of value out of looking at change management and principles and techniques. And I really like the work that uh, Holly Burkett has done. Um, uh, and, and her book, I think, is called Learning in the Long Run or Learning for the Long Run, um, that really kind of merged some of these, these ideas into practical ways to, to affect change. Um, I, I'm not sure about writing something. I think that's a great challenge. And I would like to do something to translate some of my experience and be able to share back with the field. Thank you. Is there a favorite performance improvement term or phrase that you would like to define for us? Perhaps you see it as being used in a confused or inconsistent manner out in the field. Uh, do you have something for us? Well, you've done a lot of these interviews, and, and I've seen a few of them, Guy, and uh, I, I expect a lot of the good, the good terms are taken. But I, I, I mentioned uh, Will Talheimer earlier, and I really like one of the phrases that he uses, um, stealth messaging. And I think he's using it, I've seen him use it in, in you know, an evaluation context before, but I really like the idea of, of stealth performance consultant. Um, it, it doesn't work for me to go uh, to, to someone who's a potential um, client or requester of business or even my management team and say that I want to go do this thing. It makes sense for me to be able to help solve their problems or add value or contribute to a project. And, and many times it might not be to, to own or, or take formal leadership on something. So I like the idea of influencing um, the direction of a strategy or contributing to a project or, or a training design and working in aspects of performance consulting, working in solid analysis, working in questions, uh, lines of inquiry that, that speak to what the true needs are, um, what the possible causes are, and then get to um, hopefully a robust um, you know, realm of solutions and interventions. Um, I really like the work that um, 
uh, Steve Foreman and Mark Rosenberg have done in, in, in you know, the language of a learning and performance ecosystem. Uh, and thinking about things from that perspective has, has really helped me uh, communicate with my uh, internal clients. Mm -hmm. Thank you. As a wrap to our interview here, do you have any parting words of wisdom or guidance for our audience, uh, particularly the new people entering the field? What, what would you uh, say to them? I think my focus right now is to widen your aperture. And if you're you know, into performance improvement and HPT and, and performance improvement, you can't just focus on that, that one discipline or that one way of looking at things. There's a lot of value in taking a you know, systems approach and, and you know, ascribing to the, the tenets of performance improvement, but you have to look at these other fields and disciplines too because there's a lot of um, relationship and there, it's really important to understand um, how to communicate with the people that you work with. And so from my perspective, I'd say, to, to go big and try to get some broad knowledge to allow you to communicate, but at the core, I think, are these, these principles, um, you know, of engaging with people, of doing good analysis, of, you know, measurement, evaluation, and of affecting real change that, that do really come back to performance improvement, whatever, whatever you call it. Dave, thank you so much for agreeing to do this uh, interview. Have a great day. Thanks, Scott.